ちょっと帝国となりましたので始めたいと思います。Thank you for coming to the open run session at IGF.、Uh, this is Hiro Takaoka from MEC.、Um, we have、uh, excellent、uh, panelists and moderators、uh, from Japan, the US, and you know, from around the globe.、Um, so,、uh, first, a, this session consists of two panels, discussions.、Uh, first one is about a Panel discussion on advantage, challenge, and potential of Overrun. And the second one is a cooperation with OTIX. So、uh, I would like to start off、uh, from the first panel. So、uh, before that,、uh, let us have a opening remarks from、uh, DG of Global Strategy Bureau of MIC,、uh, Tawara Yasuo. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm、uh, Tawara Ayasu, m i n i s t e r of Internal Affairs and Communication in Japan.、Uh, it's a great pleasure for us、uh, to host the IGF and to hold Open Secure 5G and Supplier Diversification session here in Kyoto. I would like to express my sincere gratitude、uh, to all、uh, from related companies and organizations for,、uh, for their efforts. In organizing this session, I would also like to express my sincere gratitude to all the participants、uh, for their interest in this session. Telecommunications、uh, infrastructure, such as 5G,、uh, is、uh, becoming more and more、uh, important every day and is backbone infrastructure、uh, that underpin. As our social and economic activities. In Japan, the public and private sectors are working together to deploy、uh, nationwide networks so that ad advanced、uh, service can be provided st、uh, stably、uh, while ensuring the safety and reliability of the supply chain of facilitated, in,、uh, including、uh, base stations. In this sense, I'm convinced that the public private session today are very meaningful. We have two panel d i s c u s s i o n in this session. The first panel, the panelists will discuss open runs, advantages, challenges, and、uh, potentials. In the second one, they will discuss collaboration between、uh, governments and、uh, OTICs and training laboratories. Let me start off. By briefly introducing the Open Run Security Report. The Open Run Security Report was uh, released uh, in May、uh, this year by Quad, Australia, India, Japan, United States,、uh, Critical and Emerging Technologies Working Groups against the backdrop of growing interest in Open Run, in which security risks were pointed out. Due to、uh, the diversification of interfaces and components. Since security is considered to be one of the major、uh, challenges in implementing Open Run, this report aims to objectively evaluate security issues and potential mitigation, uh, uh, mitigation measures. This 160 pay,、uh, pages report anal analyzes, an、uh, analyzes the advantages, challenges, and possibilities of overcoming challenges of open run compared to traditional run. Through objective research and analysis,、uh, including technical demonstration, this report points out the following three points. First, First one is、uh, Open Run offers important cybersecurity advantages due to improved transparency or visibility. It means a mobile network operator、uh, can control and manage its network more easily,、uh, not、uh, depending on system vendors. Second, most of the risks attributed to Open Run are 
common to those in traditional RAN as well. Based on our analysis uh, through technical demonstrations, only 4% of the security risks are unique to open run. And finally, uh, these risks, which are uh, inherent in open run, can be mitigated and managed through recommendations presented in the report. Checklist is attached as appendix. By meeting the security requirements, of the standards and checklist, we can achieve the security levels equivalent to traditional run. Based on these uh, considerations, this report uh, considers that use of open run does not fundamentally alter the security risk uh, landscape for telecommunications compared to traditional run. This is a brief uh, introduction to this report. In today's session, based on the contents of the report, I hope uh, that uh, representatives of the companies and the relevant organizations from the various countries will engage in active discussions on the potential and uh, challenges of Open RAM from various perspectives. Thank you. Thank you, DG Tawara. So now uh, I would like to pass the floor to uh, Mr. Uh, Hishida, uh, moderator. Uh, hello. Uh, it's very nice to be here. Uh, my name is Mitsuhiro Hishida uh, from uh, MIC Japan. Uh, uh, until July, I was working for the uh, 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 in Global Strategy Bureau, and now I'm based in Kanazawa. Kanazawa is a regional city in Hokuriku region, uh, two hours and a half right from here. Uh, this morning I, I came with, with this uh, limited train in express and then came here. It's a great, great pleasure to be back in such a setting. Well, uh, today we have uh, two panels. First panel will be, I'll, I'll be the moderator. The second panel will be chaired by Ms. Jeshare, <laughs> who is my, uh, one of the good friends. <laughs> Uh, so first one, in my first panel, uh, I'd, I'd like to discuss the advantage, the challenge, and potential of open run. Uh, as uh, Mr. Digi Tawara mentioned in his opening remark, we published uh, the open run security report, which focuses on the security aspect of this open run. Well, but uh, in this panel, we talk not, not only about security, not only security aspect, but also we talk about the, uh, for example, the cost, uh, cost respect, respect the cost, and also the energy efficiency and so on. So with, uh, with, with such a um, many, many other, other advantage and disadvantage and some challenges, uh, we can, uh, I, I hope we can conclude some positive uh, message from this panel. Uh, well, let me uh, first uh, introduce a panelist uh, from the, my uh, left, left side, <laughs> so, uh, Mr. Uh, Umesh from NT Docomo. And next we have Mr. Santiago from Philippines. Uh, and also we have uh, Chris <laughs> from Ericsson. And also Mr. Mr. Sato from Fujitsu. Mr. Sato from Fujitsu. And also lastly, uh, we have uh, Mr. Me Mehesh from Lacten Symphony. So I'd like, first, I'd like to uh, ask each of the panelists to make have, uh, some uh, opening remarks. And then I'd like to come go to the panel, panel discussion. So first, Mr. Amesh, please. Thank you. Um, so my name is Anil Umesh from NTT Docomo. Um, I have been working on Open RAM, on uh, the topic of this session uh, for some time, and I, I'm very pleased to have this opportunity to um, have this um, to attend this session today. Yeah. Konnichiwa, Eric Santiago from the Philippines. I, um, I'm in charge of the fix and wireless network of PLDT Smart. And I, uh, we've been doing a lot of trials on open run with our partner NTT Docomo in the past uh, several months. And we're looking forward for more implementation later on. Thank you. Everybody, you keep 
Uh, hello, my name is Christopher Price. I'm representing Ericsson uh, from the CTO office of Ericsson. Um, for us, uh, those who follow the news, we've recently made some strong announcements about our support for Open RAN and ORAN technologies. Uh, we have a, an incumbent portfolio which, which we are looking to make sure that we can evolve. Uh, we can create opportunities for new technologies, for new ecosystems to come into existing networks. Uh, we think it's very important that, that we don't branch off into separate tracks. We think it's very important. Is it not on? There you go. It's, yeah? Okay. Um, it's very important to make sure that we maintain uh, a cohesive communications infrastructure solution as we emerge through new and emerging technologies that ORAN brings, such as cloudification and the, the uh, enablement of artificial intelligence in networks. Um, so for us, uh, we're very pleased to be here uh, to talk about Open RAN, to talk about not only the security concerns and considerations, but also the opportunities that Open RAN brings. Thank you. Um, this is uh, Naoto Sato from Fujitsu. Um, Fujitsu using the uh, uh, Beyond 5G optics, wireless, and software technology to create cloud-native uh, solution uh, toward uh, 20, 2025. And uh, Fujitsu's key initiative, in fact, that uh, all-land technology uh, to create, to drive uh, open run and virtual run, and also between the intelligence into that, allow very, uh, various uh, devices or services to be converged, combined in the, uh, by the leveraging uh, the auto automation uh, derived from cutting-edge AI and uh, uh, deep learning as well as security technologies. And the last one, maybe the uh, uh, green technology, we're also um, aiming the uh, uh, limit increasing power uh, consumption by building the uh, sustainable uh, infrastructure. And today is really happy to discuss uh, together with us. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm Mahesh Kasar from Rakuten Symphony. It's a subsidiary of uh, Rakuten Mobile. Uh, Rakuten Mobile is world's first uh, fully virtualized uh, cloud native open RAN based network. Uh, we launched in 2020. Uh, we uh, have 5 million plus subscribers in Japan, covering 98% of the population uh, of the Japanese uh, territory. Uh, the technology has been proven now, and we have also started building a new network in Germany uh, based on open RAN technologies. So we can authoritatively say that this is the technology of the future where we need to lead the uh, democratization of network and communication structure. Looking forward to that discussion today. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, actually, we have also one uh, panelist online. So I'd like to call on uh, Mr. James Grading. Uh, are you, Mr. Mr. Grading, are you there? Konnichiwa. Can you hear me? Yes, please. Go ahead, please. Thank you very much, everybody. And uh, uh, really shame that I can't be with you today. I'm, I'm, in, uh, I'm still in the UK and uh, unfortunately couldn't travel to, to Japan today. Um, but I'm representing Vodafone. Um, we are market leaders uh, in Europe for Open RAN. We've um, been on this journey now for the last uh, seven to eight years, um, testing uh, many components in the Open RAN space, um, uh, understanding the, the, the security challenges and concerns. Um, but we're at the point now where we've deployed a number of sites in the UK in the Open RAN stack. Um, and uh, evolving that now to other markets across Europe. So very, very good to be here today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, well, so also with these panelists, panelists, we are going to have the panel discussion today. So first uh, question I'd like to pose to the, each panelist is, uh, uh, how, it's, uh, actually it's, it's, a, it's a relationship between this uh, IGF and this panel. Uh, as you know, uh, we are now in you know, IGF and uh, the theme of this IGF is uh, internet we want. So uh, what kind of internet we want? Uh, in my idea, it's a free internet, free connection, being inclusive, no frag fragmentation, uh, and, and so on. But uh, actually, for to achieve such a free internet, accessible internet, uh, we need to have a secure, stable, uh, 
internet connection. In, that sense, in this sense, I think uh, infrastructure is very important, and Opera is uh, the technology that will enable such a stable, secure uh, internet. This is my idea, but I'd like to ask each of the uh, panelists very quickly about how do you think about this the relationship between the, the internet we want and uh, our open technologies. So maybe, I guess, please. Yes. Thank, thank you, um, Hishida-san, for um, the very, um, how to say, um, the good question um, that we, uh, we should think about. Um, uh, from my point of view, um, um, in op open round, what we see is um, yes. Um, f first of all, the openness um, does um, lead to uh, we think um, I inclusion in the in the sense that we want to see more um, new and um, innovative um, vendors and, and providers um, uh, come um, to be emerging. And we would also like to see um, together with the existing vendors um, that this would help to provide. Uh, Vibrant, vibrant supplier ecosystem, and, and through through this, we, we hope to be able to deliver better services, like in terms of Ishtasan, you mentioned, secure and stable. But in the end, we, we this is um, our goal, um, and and in 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 the uh, requirements getting more diverse, we think it's more important to have um, good good supplier ecosystem to provide this kind of uh, secure, stable internet, and and we think open RAN is very um, important uh, for this. All right, thanks for the question. Uh, for me, um, Open Run can contribute to internet governance by, by the increase in transparency and accountability. I think those are two very important things as we proceed with Open Run, transparency and accountability. By doing so, you will increase also the innovation on, on in the field, right? They will, we will minimize vendor lock-in. In that way, we could also support sustainability later on because of that innovation will trigger more um, uh, low power consumption equipments and, and, uh, and, and with, that, with that competition, uh, it will just benefit the end user. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so uh, I'll take a slightly different approach to the question. I think if, if I look back in time, 3G, we, we first got the internet to the, to the mobile phone. Uh, and in 4G, the internet sort of became uh, utilized through the mobile phone. Uh, in 5G, uh, we're driving industrialization of the internet. We're trying to bring new capabilities and engage enterprise on mobility in the internet. And I think this is a huge change for us as an industry. The role Open RAN plays and can play here is, is to create those ecosystems where we're able to compete on uh, capabilities, efficiency, um, price, of course. Uh, but not only that, it, it can also introduce artificial intelligence into the network and into how the network is able to make decisions as we address more and more complex uh, internet capabilities on the mobile internet. So I see, I see Open RAN playing a number of roles uh, as, as a technology uh, evolution champion for various aspects of how we bring 5G forwards and how we make it easier to use and how we better serve society. Okay. Satan, please. Uh, yes. Um, so openness and open LAN allows us to transfer uh, the mobile network from, um, in fact, the one uh, we have the, uh, um, you know, is a really limited vendors and the companies can participate uh, to create the maintain the mobile networks from into the, the, the one which is more open. I mean that uh, um, IT technology combining the uh, CT, I mean mobile network kind of uh, communication technology and uh, IT technology should be more used in uh, communication technology which means that uh, um, the, the IT technology market um, is, is continuously grow. So. Uh, those kind of the uh, IT engineer can joining the uh, mobile networks, uh, which means that the foundation of the uh, supporting the mobile network uh, can also grow. It means that we believe in that uh, um, uh, reading the uh, inclusiveness and the sustainability 
uh, in the future. So or this, I think this is uh, this is a possible. And if, if that the foundation is grow, then uh, we have more possibility to have innovation uh, in the future. So uh, this uh, is a, as a consequence. Uh, this brings uh, good good things in our society. Thank you very much. So, yes, please, uh, Mr. Uh, Ume. Yes, thank you, uh, uh, in, in my uh, in my view, uh, I am strong believer of uh, the connectivity as a critical factor for development of human potential, and there is a human potential which has not have not access to the internet and the communication technologies yet. It has been dominated by a closed community. It has been dominated, and, and the things has not changed, whether we change from 1G to 2G to 3G to 4G to 5G, a world which lives in 5G, and there is a world which does not have any G available for connectivity. That is possible. Uh, when we do open RAN-based deployments and we open the interfaces for everybody to participate in building those networks. This, when, this will bring in vendor diversity, this will bring in cost optimization, this will bring in uh, access to the technologies to the lowest part of the world. So I would look at it as a platform to give access to every individual on the planet Thank you. Thank you very much. So lastly, uh, on the online, uh, I'd like to ask Mr. James Grading, uh, the, the same question. Uh, Mr. Grading, uh, what do you think about this relationship between this, uh, the internet we want and this operant technology? Yeah, so I think I think I agree with with the panel the panelists uh, and their comments uh, thus far. But I think you know bringing um, digital communities or or digital capabilities to rural communities is is key to all of this. You know, what Open RAN does it brings uh, competition into the the market. It brings other uh, technologies into the market as well. And as part of that, um, you can really drive best in class solutions for. Um, all the different environments, be it urban, be it rural, be it um, um, remote communities where, you know, you wouldn't have that capability before. Um, but that's that's bringing uh, internet connectivity to people. But I think the other thing is, is changing how we, we operate as, as an industry going forward as well. So through automation and AI, I think Christopher mentioned that that brings capabilities through SMO. Um, and the capabilities of, uh, of RIP platforms and X apps and R apps that, that will actually benefit not only um, us as operators, but the, 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 the enterprise customers and consumers um, on the ability to be able to uh, drive um, sp specific requirements for the customer, be it for um, dedicated bandwidth, um, 5G um, network slicing or whatever that might be but actually bringing certain applications to the customer and putting in the customer's hands. Thank you very much. So uh, from this, the previous uh, discussion, I understand that uh, maybe openness will include, uh, it will uh, invite more players to this uh, uh, open, open run, uh, field and uh, it will uh, be uh, uh, promote the competition and it will also promote the innovations and uh, it will maybe that such a democratic setting will maybe the, the beneficial to the uh, the internet we want this is my understanding well now uh, the next question by the way I think that this brings about about the, for the next question uh, to to for the, the open land this discussion we also hear about the security uh, uh, concern uh, I, I had uh, I read some uh, paper issued by the European colleague uh, mentioning that uh, since Open RAN introduces some um, uh, new interfaces, it will be uh, the challenge for the, uh, the the security of the Open Open RAN uh, the, the, the net networks. So my, my next question is this uh, uh, security issues. Uh, how do you what do you think this uh, Open RAN can? Uh, is, uh, how, can, how do you see the, the security of the open land? Do you think the introduction of the new interfaces can be a really challenge to this uh, the, the open uh, security of open land? Or do you think that we, maybe we can uh, uh, 
overcome such a ch uh, challenge by introducing some new technologies? And this is my second question. So uh, maybe from uh, Ms. Bates. Thank you, uh, Shida-san, again for that question. So I think this is also very important. Um, the way I see it, so th there are, I think, um, well, open run is, is, is a new way of working. So whenever something new comes in, I guess um, nowadays security is very important. So that's assessment on security, that, that, that will always come into play. Um, so, um, but in the end, I think uh, this is something we, we, we would address. And uh, if we look at it from a different perspective, um, from the way we see it, it was also mentioned, I think, also in that um, this open security, uh, open RAN security report. But um, we also see having this open um, interface or the open uh, specifications allow for transparency and also having this in the standards. Uh, many people looking at this topic could make things better. And again, um, also, we, I mentioned earlier about um, having new entrants, having new solutions, but I think this is also, um, hopefully we, we would also see this for security. So in the end, um, we think at the beginning, I think this is um, open run is new, so that's a new aspect which we need to consider, but in the end, um, we think um, open run could be better for security. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Mesh, I think you explained uh, that uh, your son is viewpoint from the from the uh, viewpoint of the operators who already introduced these multi vendor systems. Uh, so, uh, so I'd like to ask Mr. Santiago. I, I think you, in your company you are interested in uh, introducing open technologies, and I think you are also do introducing the some uh, POC in in, in, your, in, your, in your country. Uh, so, so far, so how do you, how do you think the, about these security issues? How did the evaluation so far? Yes, thank you. You know, in anything, in any new things, hardware, software, there will be new, new issues on the security, right? But as, as I have been doing my due diligence, there's really only 4% of new security issues that can be found on open run, right? So with that said, I fully believe that it can be overcome if we focus on three things. Number one, we really need to have a regulatory framework. Second, there should be that industry collaboration to be able to solve those 4% new security issues. And the third one, it's really dependent on the engagement of all the stakeholders to fully resolve it. So it's doable. I'm optimistic that it could, we could be able to overcome it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, from the, so I'd like to ask uh, the, the viewpoint from the operators. And uh, from the online, uh, we have James Grading from Vodafone. So James, I think the Vodafone is also interested in introducing the open uh, multi vendor system. Uh, how, how is your viewpoint so far about the security of open RAN? Um, yeah, so I think um, if, if I can rephrase the question slightly, Vodafone are not introducing, they have already introduced or we have already introduced Open RAN into our network. Um, and based on that, um, we have got deployments in the network which are um, taking live and commercial traffic. Um, and Vodafone takes security very seriously. Um, uh, through 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 working with the with the uh, Open RAN Alliance in, in working group 11, providing standards to the to the uh, to the vendors that that specifications need to be met. Um, I think I think Anil actually touched upon it as well. What what it does, um, uh, Open RAN actually brings um, more opportunities to to really address some of the security challenges that we've got in in any RAN network. Um, because, you know, from working with traditional RAN, uh, it's almost a black box to the operators. But what this does, it, it allows the operators to really unpick each component of the open RAN stack um, and ensure that the standards are met um, through secure by design. And that could be secure by design internal um, uh, requirements, but also secure by design from, a, from an industry perspective as well. Um, you know, as uh, any testing that we do within Vodafone has to go through a resilient um, uh, th um, third party penetration test. 
um, and by which that you, you know we're breaking down all of the components um, and ensuring that uh, that we've got the capability of that transparency. So I think I think what it does is actually it actually um, ensures that the the security is is not only driven by the vendors um, and specifications would be provided into vendors to say this is what the the security requirements would be up front but also it puts the responsibility on the operators themselves to actually ensure that what, it, what is being deployed in the network is, is secure and secure by design. Um, uh, so I think, yeah, I think it's um, working as, as a community to ensure that all uh, uh, security specifications are, are agreed and, and uh, tested up front. And actually some of that testing should be driven by the vendors in advance before coming into the operators. So, so I, see, I see Open Run really um, opening up the box, for want of a better term, on security and putting um, putting more of a spotlight on it and ensuring that all components are secure throughout the, the, the architecture. Thank you very much. So uh, I heard from the, 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 the James that uh, the security, but the, the security by design. So I, in my understanding, so security by design is uh, the, the, the operator is going to be test the, the, each of the component, but uh, this, uh, through such a process, uh, it's kind of the collaboration between the operators and the vendors. Uh, in this place, I'd like to ask the opinion from the vendors. So, Mr. Sato, uh, I think you are at the ICT vendors. Uh, uh, Fujitsu is now co uh, producing the, uh, the open -up components. Yes. So, so how do you think about this, this security challenge of the open um, Yeah, in fact, that uh, um, from a uh, vendor point of view, um, we also focusing on um, secure by design, I mean, plus process into in order to develop the software and also that the how we uh, our solution is the uh, secure enough to to the market this is also the challenge but uh, um, we think that uh, this is most important things is is the uh, resiliency for for the for the uh, for the security which means that um, um, uh, once transparency is is on then the uh, uh, each vendor has to have the responsible for responsiveness for the for the security. Then, which means that uh, um, more um, uh, you know it's kind of competition of the vendors will be uh, more high. And then uh, finally, that uh, as a good consequence to have the good security and open and transparent uh, network will be will be uh, built up. So this is what we are thinking currently. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, so I'd like to ask another vendor's opinion from the Chris. Uh, I think Exxon is also providing some components for the open run. Uh, how do you evaluate the security issues? Um, security in mobile networks is extremely important. We take uh, 5G technology, for instance. There are over 100 open interfaces which are standardized uh, and secured. Uh, in that technology. Uh, Open Brand brings three new interface areas that, that need to undergo the same due diligence, need to undergo the same hardening, uh, require the same uh, effort in order to bring them up to the, to the same level and, and establish them as global standards. Uh, so Ericsson, for instance, is a, uh, the leader in the Open Brand security community as far as contributions are concerned. We believe strongly in building secure by design. Um, and so you'll see with the open interfaces that we're bringing on the SMO side um, and through the cloud ran to radio side. The same due diligence we see on existing 5G interfaces will be applied uh, and the same levels of security and trustworthiness can, can be expected. Uh, there are challenges, of course, in the AI area uh, and in some of the automation pieces where we are addressing new concepts that we're not masters of yet uh, and, and building this on top of the 5G network that we have today uh, for which we're not masters of yet, I think. Um, is an added complication, but I think due diligence and, uh, and good testing and interoperability work is, is critical to, to drive in technology. Thank you. Thank you very much. Lastly, I'd like to ask uh, Lakte, just to point of view, uh, Mr. Mahesh. Uh, I, think, I think the Lakte is kind of the, uh, working as a system integrator to, uh, to, to enable the, this uh, open run technologies. Uh, so in, this, in this place, I think uh, you are d d dealing with many uh, vendors and doing, do, dealing with this, such a security by design uh, concept. Uh, how do you now evaluate such a security of the open run so far? Uh, well, from Rakuten Symphony, we have both actually. We have built a Rakuten mobile network. So we have experience uh, 
building the world's largest fully virtualized open RAN network with uh, security inbuilt. So security was part of the design itself. Our approach is pragmatic. We take a zero trust and zero touch approach to the security. Uh, from telecom perspective, uh, I may say that we have been a lagger in terms of security approaches, but IT and enterprise IT has been gone ahead. So we learned from those practices, best practices picked from the enterprise IT segment, and we have deployed those practices in uh, the uh, network. So that fortifies the network security by resilience, privacy, user, and um, the uh, data integrity in mind. At the same time, if, if we look at the parameters which have been considered for the security fortification, where the strong identity certificates, the um, validation of the secure elements, every time you get an element, you get a validation on the securities. Uh, we did the segmentation of the network elements, and uh, at the same time, all the network activities has been made uh, visualized. So whatever activity happens, you have vis vigilance on it. That gives you, um, that also, also limits the access to like network elements from various parties. So through these um, different practices, we have secured our network. We have done that. So in terms of these uh, discussions on Open RAN not being secure, we would invite them to see it. And if they still feel that seeing is believing, they will definitely believe it. Thank you very much. So from the uh, previous speakers, I understand that uh, the this issue of security is now being uh, addressed by each uh, viewpoint, some, some point, from the vendor's perspective, from the cap cap operator's perspective. And uh, I, I think it's kind of the uh, uh, collaboration among the vendors and carriers. And also some, sometimes the, 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 the uh, uh, the entity such as OR, ORPC, who is not this, this setting the some uh, uh, specification for security, uh, with such uh, collaborative uh, works, I think the op security of the open now will be addressed, uh, and uh, I think we, this can uh, this can uh, bring about the uh, the secure and the open secure in, in, uh, infra infrastructure. Well, now then, the next uh, I'd like to turn to the, ne the next uh, question. It's about the cost. Uh, since the open run is kind of the uh, the, the, the multi-layer uh, multi uh, the structure, it might there's an argument that it costs higher. It it, it costs it's more costly than the the ordinary vertical integrated networks. So, so but uh, how do you think about this cost effect? Uh, first, I'd like to ask Mr. Andy Docomo, uh, because Andy Docomo is already introducing multi system. How do you think about this cost aspect of the open now? Thank you. Yes, um, as, as, as you mentioned, yes, we have um, introduced open RAN um, since our start of 5G um, in 2020. And, uh, and then also very recently we Last month, we uh, announced that we also started, um, introduced uh, virtual VRAN networks. Um, on the cost, uh, we believe also, um, from cost point of view, an open RAN and VRAN could be benef would be beneficial. Um, we have seen um, uh, actual aspects, like uh, obvious, um, would be having, with open RAN, we have more, more choices the way we see it. So. Um, cost, there is um, competition and there's also, uh, we would be able to choose the best solution where cost is one of the factors. Um, so, so uh, among others like performance or schedule and, and, and th that is obviously one thing. And uh, there are, as mentioned, this is also a little bit um, common to what I mentioned for security, but there are new, new aspects in um, open run. So there are Especially in the beginning, um, there may be some uh, some factors where um, there could be additional of cost. But in in 
uh, in the total, we, we are, I think we are seeing, we are expecting um, cost um, uh, to be also, to, to receive benefits from cost. And we also think that as Open RAN and VRAN, as they, as they scale, we expect to see even further um, benefits. That's the way we see it, yeah. Thank you very much. Next, I'd like to ask the, an, another carrier who is introducing uh, the system is Lakten. So, Mr. Mr. Mahesh, uh, do you also think this, this, uh, the introduction of the multiple, multiple vendor will uh, promote the competition and it will reduce the cost? Do you think so? Uh, obviously, yes. Uh, because until now, the mobile networks were dominated by uh, the mobile infrastructure providers, and they have uh, all the vertical stack, which was proprietary and has been uh, cost, not has been cost effective so far. So if in, in Rakuten Mobile, our approach was an open architecture with multi-vendor ecosystem, which will bring in uh, off-the-shelf components, which are available in the market. So we can pick and choose from which components we want. The second aspect was we did the hardware and software disintegration. Most of the network components were virtualized and put onto the cloud. So whenever you have a scalability problem in the network, you need to put a cost to it. Now that cost is gone because the scalability is managed by the cloud infrastructure itself, by the Kubernetes. It, it will manage your pods and the containers itself so that how much allocation need to be done. The AI-driven approach put into the software will also manage what are the components to be utilized. So your cost goes down there. Your cost goes down for operating the network itself. In Rakuten Mobile, if we'd have gone with the traditional vendor and traditional approach, we would have end up spending 40% more on the CapEx. So today, we are saving on the capital expenditure was 40%, and operational expenditure is 30% if we ha would have done it in the traditional way. So cost is another area where we have already championed uh, the aspect here. Thank you very much. So next I'd like to ask the vendor's perspective. So Sato-san, uh, how, how, do, how do you think about this cost perspective open now? Yes, um, thank you. Um, uh, from uh, virtual, uh, vertical integration point of view, I think that, uh, um, of course, integration cost is the uh, it's not eligible. In fact, that uh, has to be smart enough. Um, beside of that, uh, from from hardware uh, point of view, um, we believe in that uh, uh, evolution of the device is the, the 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 speed of the evolution of the device is really is fast enough. And uh, um, also that we like to take advantage of this means that uh, our Fujitsu uh, VLAN solution is also thinking that. Uh, um, uh, you know, uh, we like to have the, uh, our VLAN solution on top of the cutting edge devices, uh, which means uh, we can take advantage of these, those evolution of the devices. And also, um, uh, tr tr from traditional uh, RAM point of view, um, of course it is really optimized in terms of the uh, energy savings and performances as well. Um, we understand that, uh, uh, you know, the, the speed of the hardware evolution and um, um, I, I think that uh, um, uh, can be can this can if afford to do that by, by maybe very soon because of the um, you know uh, how do I, uh, investment. In fact, that uh, um, for traditional rand to invest hardware, uh, it's really hard for, for us. And and uh, 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 device evolution and uh, servers which used by any other uh, you know, industry area. This means that uh, uh, this, um, you know, that the cost effectiveness for, 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 for those things, that we like to take advantage of those uh, things into the mo mobile networks. Thank you very much. So I'd, I'd like to ask Ericsson's point of view. Uh, and I think Ericsson is uh, doing, dealing with the vertically integrated networks, and also you are providing some of the open run component. Uh, how do you compare the cost between the uh, different types? Um, so th the, the cost is a question of uh, opportunity. Um, and I think 
one of the things that Neil said is it, it's a matter of choice. Where am I going to choose to deploy different technologies and why? Uh, what am I trying to achieve by using them in this area and, and where are my potential savings or not? Uh, at Ericsson, we believe in, in the most efficient and uh, most effective networks that we can produce. In other words, we want to leverage the air interface uh, as much as we can. That's the critical thing that we need to solve for mobile networks. Uh, technologies such as MIMO to allow you to, to, to leverage a, a sequence of frequencies up to five to six times uh, more than you do with a traditional uh, radio is extremely important. So bringing that technology and bringing those capabilities uh, into the ORAN ecosystem is something that, that we're striving to achieve and really want to bring forward. Uh, that provides then choice for operators to, to be able to leverage the best technology and to be able to deploy it either in a cloud solution uh, where that makes sense or in a standalone solution where that makes sense to the operator. Uh, there's no right answer, I think, um, on, on how best to approach this, but uh, as the technologies emerge and as they mature, we'll see more and more synergy between the two. Uh, we'll see uh, the ability to integrate uh, different components uh, in different ways. Uh, but that takes time. Uh, we know it's not, uh, it's not so simple just to plug things together and expect the national network to work. Uh, it, it takes effort, it takes global standards, uh, and it takes ecosystems. And that's, uh, I think, where we're, we're spending our efforts and time to try and bring a home for us. Thank you. Thank you very much. So next, I'd like to ask the Vodafone's point of view. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Grading, uh, uh, I, I heard that from your previous uh, comment that uh, you actually uh, uh, introducing the open law uh, in some areas, and uh, uh, I think to, I think you, you kind of in a position to compare the traditional uh, vertical integrated system and also the open law system. So so, so so far in this uh, at, the, in the, at this at this point of view, how do you evaluate the cost between the, the traditional uh, uh, vertical con vertical system and open law? So I think again, many of the points have been have been touched upon already. But um, I think you know we're fairly advanced as an industry in in open RAN, um, and when you compare it to traditional RAN, I think um, there is still some some way to go in in total cost of ownership from um, from a compet competition perspective, the ecosystem maturity perspective. Um, but I think what what we're seeing is that. Um, and I think Kumar touched upon it is around the automation. You know, we can talk about ecosystem com competition, uh, best in class, but but what automation will do is it will drive down our operating costs significantly. Um, and I mean that from not not only from an operational um, and maintenance perspective through artificial intelligence of identifying when components may fail, um, uh, but also driving down you know, the capabilities or, or pushing up the capabilities to actually um, do preventative maintenance and and, uh, and and so on and so forth. But but also um, it brings the opportunity to automate um, the way that we optimize the networks as well um, and uh, driving through uh, SOM capabilities um, to to ensure that the, the networks and the uh, open run stacks are performing to, to the best of their ability. So I think it's not only competition, but it's also also automation and, and what um, uh, SMO brings uh, will will also drive down that TCO model. Um, I think just just to, just to finish for me is is on on around yeah, what what this will do is it it not only drives down what open open run is doing is is creating competition not only to drive down costs uh, for the vendors and the hardware providers but also from a traditional ram perspective because it's creating that competition in the market so overall tco costs for the for the operators um, will 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 be um, will be benefited through open run and, and the competition that open run brings thank you very much uh Next, I'd like to ask the Philippine operator's point of view. So, Mr. Santiago, uh, how do you evaluate the, I think you're already introducing some POC in your country. Uh, how do you th think so far about this cost, uh, compare, comparative, com 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 the cost of the open land compared to the traditional one? Yes, absolutely. So, I, we, we did the cost-benefit analysis to start with, right? And uh, what I have seen so far is that during the transition, or the short term, it will be a little bit higher on the open run, as typical, right? But if I look at the overall TCO, the lifespan of the of the of the, the uh, of the hardware, right? I will benefit. Why? Because of uh, the flexibility 
I will have that uh, um, also that uh, uh, resource optimization. I will also have that uh, capability to be able to do virtualization and, and more innova innovative ways on how to, to maximize my, uh, my investment. So that's pretty much it. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I heard that the word the to TCO, total cost of operation. <laughs> so, so, so even if in the short term, in the introduction of the merge vendor system might, cost, might be costly, but in from the long term, maybe as a viewpoint of the TCO, maybe it might be uh, more costly, costly effective. Yeah. I think this is the kind of the uh, <laughs> conclusion from this panel. Thank you very much. Uh, so now I'd like, to I'd like to turn to the another aspect of the open run. Next, I'd like to focus on the, uh, the, the energy efficiencies. Uh, so I also heard from the, the opponent, uh, opponents from the open run that the uh, introduction of the new interfaces may be the, uh, not, maybe have a bad effect on the, 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 on, on the uh, environment. So it will cost, it will, uh, in, in, in energy efficiency uh, point of view, uh, it is uh, more costly than the, the, the traditional one. This is the, the op what I heard from the opponent of the op opener. But how, 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 do you, how, how do you see this uh, energy efficiency uh, argument? First, I'd like to ask uh, from the anti Docomo, please. Thank you. Um, yes, so also from energy efficiency, um, well, we see, well, from, on a big part from two aspects. One, one is from the hardware perspective and one is from the software perspective. And uh, on the hardware, as, as mentioned in the previous um, discussions, the hardware is really, I think, um, evolving. So being able to take on new hardware, um, I think this is, uh, kind of uh, the idea from uh, virtualization, but that, that does help to um, uh, bring in uh, better components with I also from energy efficiency point of view. What, what, uh, one is the, C the CPUs and the servers. That's one that area. And for, for RAN, this, um, the component, the hardware accelerator component, um, taking care of the very uh, delay, uh, strict um, processing in the, in the layer one, that, that, that plays a big role. And also there we are seeing um, new, new um, components uh, in, in the market, coming into the market. So there we, we think this, um, from hardware perspective, we are expecting um, that this will get better. Energy efficiency also for open run would get, be, get better. And, and also for the software perspective, there, I think there was mentioning of um, SMO and automation, but th this is also, an area where we uh, are also also have have actually uh, have some uh, implementation already already in the current network. Some parts of it um, mainly um, initially is on the reducing radio, uh, turning off the radio, uh, which are which are not used, but um, that helps. And we, we are also seeing studies in the industry which also tries to uh, optimize um, hardware also in the baseband. So th this is also. Uh, another area which we are um, hoping that will come. Thank you very much. So I understand that the, the, the development of the hardware and, and also software will improve the energy efficiency. Uh, I, I think this can be the kind of the, the, the future direction for improving the energy efficiency of the open run. So I, I'd like to ask uh, uh, the Lacten point of view also. Uh, uh, Mr. Mahesh, uh, do you also think this that the improvement of the hardware and software can reduce can reduce the the, the uh, energy consumption of the open run? Uh, yes, obviously uh, the disintegration of software and hardware has uh, led us to less usage of hardware, which is obviously one way of reducing it. We at Rakuten Mobile we have been cons. Uh, conscious about the sustainable innovation in the hardware. Also, we have deployed some of the uh, best practices uh, to reduce the uh, energy uh, consumption in, in the network. Uh, we are committed to the reducing the carbon footprints and uh, approaching towards the net zero future by some of the examples I would say that uh, there are some 
uh, ran intelligent controllers which have been placed in place which will basically monitor the consumption of the radio which is which is the largest consumer of the energy the another largest consumer of the energy would be the data centers and the servers which are which are being optimized for example on the radio side we have developed the uh, iot based smart meters which will continuously monitor the uh, consumption of uh, the networks uh, fujitsun also has such uh, development and they are in place uh, at the same time we also monitor the you know, the traffic on the network so that we can manage the radios they can put some radios on uh, hibernation or on the slow consumption so that you don't consume more energy on the network so with these some of the aspects which we have already deployed and and those are not sufficient i would say in, uh, sitting in kyoto talking about sustainability is a touchy topic so uh, these are these are not sufficient enough so we will continue to uh, innovate ways to reduce that carbon footprint and excel towards the net zero uh, consumption Thank you very much. Uh, so so uh, Lakten mentioned the, the, the Fujitsu uh, because I understand that Lakten is also using the part of the Fujitsu as a component. So I'd like to ask Sato-san's point of view. Uh, how, how do you think, think about this energy consumption issues? Uh, yes. Um, the, as Mahesh said, that the uh, uh, cloud native point of view that uh, um, once the uh, you know, uh, data center is centralized, then it's, it's, we, we have more possibility to have the uh, smart smarter um, control for the uh, hardware uh, resources and the software resources can be um, optimized and uh, uh, stopping the uh, some servers and so on. So, um, of course, uh, those points would be the uh, part of the uh, one advantage. And also, the um, I, I'm feeling that uh, currently, um, for example, in uh, uh, open lang uh, front hall and RU and uh, base station that. Uh, uh, we have some kind of the uh, energy saving uh, sleeping mode or something like this. Um, we're thinking that it's kind of uh, we're chasing the uh, sophisticated, uh, you know, uh, operation every time. Means that uh, 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 open line front hall and standardization uh, has been defined, but uh, we have another sophisticated uh, technology to control the RU or something like this. But uh, um, I think the more uh, the standardization and the sophisticated uh, radio control, and this has to be uh, well balanced in order to define um, more implemented uh, open uh, uh, standardization because um, uh, openness uh, has to be, um, you know, s simpler is best. So um, simpler uh, open standardization and uh, having the uh, and certain level of sophistication, sophistic sophisticatedness of the RU uh, control or something like this. So we're, we're thinking that, that this would be the important things. Thank you very much. I'd like to ask the, the uh, Vodafone's point of view. Uh, so Chris, Fujitsu uh, uh, mentioned that, that there's a the more sophisticated way of the control the hardware can be introduced, can bring about the cost efficiency. How do you feel this way? Um, so uh, from, from the Ericsson point of view, I think uh, we set ourselves some targets when 5G was announced. We'd seen from 2G to 3G to 4G that the power cost had gone up on radio sites, basically with every bit that goes through. The, the cost per bit hadn't changed significant, significantly. So for 5G, we ourselves set ourselves some targets to support 5G throughput, but reduce the power consumption on the base stations by 40% from, from what we got in 4G. Um, we're currently at 37%, um, so we're, we're absolutely striving for much better energy efficiency and sustainability. Uh, and these are industry targets. These, there is work across industry in, in improving standardization and implementation. Uh, these targets, though, we find can be met with dedicated silicon solutions. Um, general purpose processes haven't been able to deliver the types of power performance savings that, that, uh, that we've been striving for. Um, but it doesn't put them out of the question, right? There's, there's room in a network for different types of implementations and, and, and different 
uh, trade-offs that you might need to make in different deployment scenarios. Uh, but for Ericsson, um, we expect to see an improvement in the ORAN performance. Um, we have, for instance, uh, over a million radio devices that have artificial intelligence built in to turn on and off antenna uh, in, in microsecond time uh, in the market today, which are, from a hardware perspective, ORAN capable. Uh, we haven't yet updated them to software, but we will be doing that during 2024. Uh, so we already have hardware capabilities that are extremely energy efficient. We expect to hit that 40% uh, target, not only on the, on the pre-built, but also on the ORAN networks uh, as the technology, deploy as the technology uh, evolves uh, and the standardization continues. Thank you very much. So I'd like to ask uh, a Vodafone's point of view. Uh, so Mr. Grading, I, I think also you are uh, considering the, the this, uh, energy consumption I issues when you are, uh, you are designing the, your networks. Uh, so far, how do you evaluate this uh, uh, environmental effect of this open land so far? So uh, I think, I think all the panelists have mentioned the, the different components and the and the different uh, energy draw that each component uh, brings and, and and you know eight i think i'm right in saying 80 percent of the energy on the site is is down to the rus and and what we've what we've um what what we found through some of the testing that we've done in our live environment the the ru uh, the rus are competitive to traditional ram uh, rus today so so those energy savings that we're seeing or or energy benefits that we're seeing in open RAN are, are actually coming to fruition now um but i think the the area of focus really needs to be on two areas one is the the, the digital units that the the, the the cot servers um and you know that's where um much of the the energy draw is and and and, and also around this this the what what open round does it it gives us the opportunity to to develop the silicon the chipsets uh to be far more efficient from a processing perspective from from a layer one perspective as well so so um, i mean from vodafone's point of view the rus are we're seeing are are actually um competitive from a from an energy perspective now um, but the area that really needs to be focused from an, as an industry is is the is the servers and the and the um, and the DU areas. Thank you very much. Uh, so lastly, I'd like to ask, ask uh, the Mr. Santiago's point of view. Uh, so so far, so far we hear from the, the argument that this uh, that, that this improvement of the software and hardware can there is a possibility to. Uh, improve the energy efficiency or the, 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 each, each the component. Uh, so, so far, how do you feel about this kind of the argument? Do you think it, it, it's possible that we can achieve more uh, energy efficient uh, five, five, uh, open network? Yeah, energy management is one of uh, my, uh, my pillars in, the, in my network ambition. So to further reduce uh, energy consumption. And with that said, I could see open run similar to what I'm doing in 4G, 5G to implement the same self-optimizing network AI algorithms in order to further reduce uh, the power consumption in a most uh, smart and uh, efficient way, but at the same time provider, providing still that, uh, that increase uh, uh, coverage and capacity as you go along. So. I could see that one as uh, really doable uh, by implementing open red. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we are almost uh, coming to the end of the, uh, the, the, the time, time, time we are, we are located, but uh, we still have, uh, I see, five minutes, more, more. Seven minutes, okay. So last, actually I'd like to ask uh, uh, each panelist uh, about the, uh, the, the human, 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 human resource aspect. Well, uh, I, from the uh, argument I hear from the, the, this open discussion, my impression is uh, so far the, the system is all, all on the responsibility of the uh, ICT vendors. So carriers can just uh, ask the ICT vendors, ICT vendors can set up everything, and there is uh, not so much required for the operator side. But since open line is introduced, maybe my understanding is there is going to be more responsibility for the uh, operators. They, they have to know more about, about this. Uh, see, system is going to be more 
uh, transparent, but on the other hand, the, the operators, that need, operators need to see each of the component uh, based on this uh, clarity. There is also human capability is also required for the operator, operator side also. This is my understanding. So lastly, my last question is, how do you evaluate such a need for, for, for load sharing between the carriers and vendors? And how can we, the open, introduction open run can change such a uh, load sharing between carriers and vendors? So first, I'd like to ask uh, NT Dokon, please. Thank you, Shita san this, this is also one, one, one um, very important aspect. Um, uh, as you know, we, we have um, deployed Open RAN, also VRAN recently, but especially um, we have been um, seeing uh, this system integration. Mm. This, this is happening more. Uh, we used to do it from also from 4G times from Docomo, but now with um, uh, VRAN, as mentioned by previous um, speakers, um, we are seeing more IT vendors coming into, into play, and we, we are having more. Um, the seat, it's, it's, currently, we are seeing more uh, communication um, with these uh, new players, vendors uh, for system integration. Um, so, so th this is happening. Um, I think, uh, it, in general, this could be done by the operators. I think that's um, what what we we are trying to do. I think um, many of that maybe the bigger operators are trying to do this. Um, but but uh, at the same time, this could be also uh, maybe challenging for for uh, with operators with less resources. So, um, from our point of view, we are trying to do two things um, to get open run uh, to get this spread um, globally. One is to um, share um, the experiences, share share what we have been done on the integration um, with other um, players, uh, uh, people or operators, vendors in the world so that we don't have to do the same testing um, integration each time, which would help hopefully to reduce these uh, costs also from the human resources point of view. At the, at, and then the second point of view is from Docomo point of view, we are also trying to um, uh, take on also not only system integration role uh, for Docomo, but we are also trying to do this also uh, for other operators um, who, who, who if, 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 if who would demand this um, who would um, if by request we, we are also trying to provide this kind of service so we are um, yes system integration is new this is important and it, it is a collaboration between operators and vendors uh, but uh, yes at the same time we are doing this uh, yes. thank you very much so I'd like to ask the, the Lakten point of view also so so how do you feel this kind of the uh, uh, how do you see the, the Lakten's uh, role when it comes to the human resources? Uh, when you do something first time, uh, and if, if you lead the uh, path, you need to create the path. So we knew that when we are going to deploy open RAN based uh, architecture in our network, we knew that we need to develop that human capital. We collected, uh, if, if you look at the structure today, we have uh, engineers and skilled professionals from 70 different countries, which we accumulate to build Rakuten Mobile. Now with Rakuten Symphony, we know that when we deliver these uh, solutions and architectures and the platforms to our customers, our customers also will need to build or reskill uh, their resources for open RAN based deployments. So we have built a platform called a Learning Hub through which we train our resources for open RAN based technologies. We have moved one step further and we have helped uh, Asia Open RAN Academy in Philippines uh, to train uh, engineers, telecom engineers on open RAN technologies. That platform is available uh, it has been supported by USAID as well, and MIC uh, has been also a supporter of that activity. So we have, we have done uh, enough uh, work in order to uh, secure those resources for our own deployment, as well as when other operators will go for open RAN deployments. Uh, we would uh, definitely create that resource, be it in the radio technologies, be it in the cloud native network technologies, the orchestration of the technologies, the OSS, the automation, the AI, 
all these different aspects has been covered under that training uh, in, in Asia Open Run Academy, as well as under the platform which we are providing to the operators. Thank you very much. So Mr. Smith Santiago, uh, he mentioned about the, this, this Open Academy in Philippines. So how do you think about this uh, human resource capacity building that, 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 that is going to be required for the introduction of Open Run? Do you think it's going to be more co coordinated action is necessary for, for promotion of the Open Run in, in a country like Philippines? Yeah, continuous learning is very important. Knowledge sharing, just like what we're doing with NTT Docomo, would be critical as well to minimize and not repeat the same efforts that they did, but being more efficient in focusing on the implementation and the operation of it. So to answer your question, yes, I mean, I've, I've been very involved in a lot of uh, open run discussions around the world and, and, and focusing to really what can be implemented and, and how we could be more cost effective moving forward. So with regards to HR, so that's part of my, uh, my, my vision this year and next year is really to, con to have that uh, set of engineers that, will, that I could call experts in this field. Thank you very much. So next I'd like to hear from the uh, vendor's point of view, so Sato-san. Uh, how do you think about this uh, human, um, human capability? Resources? Yes, um, I don't know if I can answer the, the question, um, but uh, um, I think that the key, key factor would be the, uh, we have to use IT technology much more. And uh, as Cloud Native at Mahesh said, that uh, this hardware software disaggregation would be the key to uh, bringing the another stage for the open run and virtual run integration. Yes, um, so very briefly, I'm looking forward to the next panel, but uh, I, regardless of whether I want to build it myself or whether I want to buy it from a vendor, uh, security is becoming increasingly important, both cybersecurity and infrastructure security. So work with your partners, work with your vendors, and work with your competitors to find the best solutions. Uh, get in the ecosystem, contribute. Uh, I'd love to see everyone at the, uh, at the ORAN Security Forum. Um, there's, there's plenty of seats there for people to join. Uh, and also at the IGF on Tuesday, there are a number of sessions on, on infrastructure and cyber security that people can participate in. But the best thing to do is, is make your decisions about your network the way you want to, and then can contribute, collaborate, and learn from your peers. Thank you. Thank you very much. Lastly, uh, on, the, on, the, on the online, uh, I'd like to ask Mr. Grading's point of view. Uh, Mr. Grading, this is the last question. Uh, you'll be the last speaker <laughs> of this panel. Uh, how do you think about this uh, the human, human capacity, capacity building uh, aspect of the Open Run? Uh, in, the, in the introduction of the Open Run, do you think there's a sense of special uh, need for the uh, human capacity building? So I, I think just, just to wrap up for me is that, um, you know, each operator, each vendor can't do this alone. Um, and you know we're we're on we're on a um, an innovation path that we're all learning from. And uh, I think what I've seen certainly over the last few years is is been a, a, a huge change in the way that the the industry works collectively and collaboratively. You know we've got uh, a number of different MOUs with different operators, uh, with different vendors and suppliers, which actually wouldn't have been the case going back two or three years ago. So knowledge transfer. Um, is is going to be key to this, and in an and I don't mean this in a, in an open round perspective, but in an open way. So really learning off each other and uh, knowledge transfer and skills transfer, because as I say, each operator, each vendor can't do this alone. We've got to do it as an industry. So um, I think I'll, I'll I'll leave on that note. Thank you very much. Now, now it comes to the end of our session. Uh, we, we, I need to uh, close this session, but uh, thank you very much for today. This very fruitful discussion. I'd like to uh, thank all the panelists and also the panelists on, on, the, on, the, on the online, Mr. James Grading. Uh, thank you very much for today's discussion. Thank you very much.
ready? Yeah. Uh, so, if you're ready, uh, can I pass the floor back to Jaisha, please? Okay, I think we are all set. Hello, everyone. My name is Jaisha Ray, and I'm the Associate Administrator for International Affairs of the National Telecommunications and Information Administration. I would like to thank my Japanese colleagues for organizing this very important event, and it is wonderful to be reunited with my friend, Hishida-san. <laughs> so um, I will start out by saying that Developing and deploying open radio access networks is a key priority for the United States, and we are working in a number of ways to advance and promote open networks. So, for example, we have our Institute for Telecommunication Sciences in Boulder, Colorado, which is looking at open radio access networks, or open RAN. They are also taking part in a 5G challenge in addition, we have the Public Wireless Supply Chain Innovation Fund to accelerate the development and deployment of Open RAN. And finally, we are actively engaged in international cooperation, such as our very exciting efforts you heard about earlier through the Quad. And there is a role for governments in all of this, but this effort can and should be industry-led. And that's why we are working closely with a range of organizations like the ORAN Alliance, the Open RAN Policy Coalition, the Telecom Info Project, among others. And these organizations are helping shape the future of Open RAN approaches and revolutionizing the telecommunications network industry. None of this would be possible without the invaluable efforts of R&D labs around the world. The ORAN Alliance is a community of mobile operators, vendors, and research and academic institutions with the mission to reshape radio access networks to be more intelligent, open, virtualized, and fully interoperable. And they have taken, taken a leading role in establishing these labs through their Open Testing and Integration Centers, or OTICs. OTICs are ORAN Alliance certified labs that provide an open, collaborative, vendor-independent, and impartial working environment to support the progress of the ORAN industry ecosystem. So I am very excited to be hearing from this group of esteemed panelists about OTICS and other test labs working in this area. And so I will briefly introduce each panelist, and then I will turn to them for remarks. So first we have Mr. Yushi Torigoe representing the Japan OTIC based in Yokosuka. We also have Mr. Alozio Pereira da Silva, representing the North American OTIC in Washington, DC, called the Commonwealth Cyber Initiative. We have Mr. Alex Weber, representing the Australian Department of Home Affairs, who will be joining us online. And finally, we ha have Mr. Tony QS Quek, representing the Asia and Pacific OTIC in Singapore. So I will first turn to Mr. Toregoe for five to six minutes of remarks. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Ray, for a kind introduction. And uh, also thank you very much, uh, DG Tawara and MIC team for organizing this uh, very timely uh, session. Um, I'm Yushi Toregoe, uh, leading YRP R&D Committee, uh, Promotion Committee, a general association for promoting R&D. Uh, on ICT with MIC, uh, Yokosuka City, Yokosuka Research Park, and Keihin Kyuko Railways and others. Um, uh, now I'd like to speak about the uh, efforts and Japan OTIC in response to 5G and Open RAN. Could you uh, display project? Yes, yes, please. Uh, so next slide, please. Thank you. So what is uh, Open RAN, uh, Open Radio Access Networks? Uh, open RAN is uh, setting open specification for segmented parts uh, RAN so that each RAN uh, part can be unitized. Uh, in the figure uh, from the right in green, uh, RU, radio unit, is a unit that communicates with the user terminals such as your smartphones and IoT terminals uh, using radio waves by amplifying carrier wave power, controlling antenna, uh, directivity, among others. Uh, DU, distributed unit, 
uh, is a unit uh, modulates and encodes signals to be transmitted, demodulates and decodes signals to be received, and performs communication control. Uh, depending on the uh, form of communication demand, it is often attached to the RU. Uh, central unit uh, is a unit controls uh, connected to DUs and RUs that are connected via DUs, connects to the core network, encrypts packets, and manages radio resources for terminals. And the next, uh, what are the benefits of, excuse me, this is uh, another one. Yes, what are the benefits of Open RAN? Uh, first, uh, reduced cost, faster technological development. Open RAN can lead to reduced cost and faster technological development. Second, participation of ventures. It can also lead to participation of venture companies through the development of technological capabilities. Third, solving safety and supply chain concern. Uh, safety and supply concern can solved by promoting the participation of other vendors. Uh, if there is a supply or a technical problem with a single supplier or a set of run equipment, there is a known substitute for equipment and there's a possibility that the communication network is that area will be affected. As a result, people living in the area may be unable to communicate uh, the internet. Next, uh, what is Oran Alliance? The Oran Alliance was established in 2018 with the aim of building next generation open and advanced wireless access networks, including 5G. Five mobile networks operators of Europe, America, and Asia are the founding members of the Oran Alliance. At present, more than 30 mobile network operators and more than 300 companies in total, including vendors and others around the world, would participate and contribute to develop interoperable specifications for open, virtualized, and intelligent radio access networks. And then uh, was the role of OTIC, Open Testing and Integration Centers. OTIC provides an open, collaborative, vendor independent and impartial working environment to support the progress of the Oran industry ecosystem, including awarding Oran certificate and badging, uh, hosting Oran Plugfest, which is the proof of concept, conformance, interoperability, and end-to-end -end testing of Oran products and solutions, uh, demos, community events or trials, and workshop or tutorials, among others. Uh, so far, uh, 15 OTICs in the world uh, have been established in the world, uh, four OTICs in Europe, six OTICs in North America, and five OTICs uh, in Asia, and Japan OTIC is the eighth OTIC in the order of establishment. About uh, Japan OTIC, it was established in December uh, last year, located in uh, YRP, Yokosuka Research Park Center, Yokosuka City, Kanagawa Prefecture, Japan. Uh, YRP uh, is an area where ICT-related research institutes and bases in other fields are concentrated since it's established in uh, 1997. Japan OTIC is jointly managed and operated by non-profit uh, YRP R&D Promotion Committee and all four mobile network operators in Japan. This joint operation by multiple operators is the first in the world. The purpose of uh, OTIC is to contribute to upgrade ORAN specifications, uh, which leads to open, intelligent, virtualized, and highly secure radio access networks. In establishing and operating Japan OTIC, uh, knowledge from research and development and surveys conducted by Ministry of Internal Affairs and Communications is utilized. Uh, here's the picture of laboratories and equipment of Japan OTIC. Uh, currently, currently has two testing laboratories, one operated by NTT Docomo, another by Rakuten Mobile. The photos were taken at the time of opening. There are more testing equipment and an acrylic chambers. So this is the uh, uh, Oran certification and badging. Um, Oran Alliance sets up Oran specifications that are specific uh, specifications of functions of hardware and software that make up the base station equipment and the interfaces that connect the equipment. 
Certification and badging conducted by OTIC can only be granted to products provided by, by ORAN Alliance members. Uh, first, uh, conformance certificate is to verify that product is compliant to the ORAN specifications using ORAN conformance test. In this figure, um, ORU green at the right, ODU at the middle, and ODU OCU set the middle and the left uh, conformance certificates as shown. Uh, second, interoperability badge, IoT badge, is to provide interoperability of pair of products connected by uh, an open uh, ORAN interface or ORAN profile uh, provided by 3GPP interface using ORAN interoperability test. In the figure, pair of ORAN, uh, ORU and ODU, IoT, and pair of ORU and ODU slash OCU set IoT badge are shown. Third, end-to-end uh, -end badge is to demonstrate and validate an end-to-end -end system or subsystem meets minimum requirements on functionality and security using ORAN and end-to-end -end test. It can also provide an indication of performance or other end-to-end -end functionalities. In the figure, the scope of ORU slash ODU slash OCU set E2E badge is shown. And uh, if after efforts of, uh, this is the explanation also, um, after efforts of constructing test facilities and conducting uh, OTIC operations, Japan OTIC issued its first certificate in June uh, this year. This is the world first certificate for global vendors like NEC. The certification by Japan OTIC is expected to expand market entry opportunities for equipment manufacturers and innovative features, reduce time to market, and reduced cost for communication services. Um, so here's the website and videos. Japan OTIC is working to raise awareness of ORAN specification and promote the use of OTIC. Uh, as, you, as you see, uh, we established Japan OTIC website containing outlines, introductory videos, news and events. We have conducted first ORAN seminar in July to promote the benefit of Open RAN and OTIC, OTIC certification budget and visit of uh, test laboratories. We also participate in uh, various exhibition and speaking opportunities. Please contact us uh, through contact us page on our website if you are interested in using Japan OTIC. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Torigoy. Now over to Mr. Parada da Silva. The floor is yours. Yeah, um, actually I have a slide, but it's not there, but then now you're gonna speak. Um, First, thank you for the invitation to be part of this panel. Um, represent uh, uh, North America, OTIC, and Washington, D.C. metro area. Um, actually, uh, we became OTIC um, three, four months ago. Okay, uh, we are located in the Washington, D.C. metro area. The OTIC is divided in two sites, main sites, an indoor laboratory that is located in the Washington, D.C. metro area, and uh, outdoor in the field, as well, where we will have a real deployment that is located in Virginia Tech main campus uh, deployment. Uh, this OT application uh, was primarily uh, supported by three carriers in the US, uh, ATT, Verizon, and DISH. Okay, uh, we are mainly focused on the conformance test, performance tests, and interoperability test. For short term, uh, we have no plan for now to uh, emit badge and certifications, but for long term is in our plan. First, we want to guarantee that we have the overall capability and expertise to test and verify the end-to-end -end conformance, performance, interoperability test in the ORAN ecosystem before making any commitment to emit badge and certifications. Uh, another uh, a specific quality of this OT in Washington DC that is led by me is that different for others uh, OT across of the world, this OT has been issued by an academia. Then in the same time, we have an academia environment, okay, with laboratory indoor and outdoor, 
where I will talk later in more details that we have been using to leverage the workforce development and the run because we really have a platform in door and outdoor where we can train people, engineers, and hands-on experiment rather than focus just in theoretical approach. Um, I think it's all from my introduction so far. Thank you. Thank you. So next, we will go to the virtual world, and we have Mr. Weber online who will be providing remarks. Thanks, Jason. Can I just confirm that you can hear me okay? Great. All good. Um, brilliant. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, firstly, thank you for the invitation to participate in today's panel, and I'd like to extend that thank you to my Japanese colleagues for the organization of the event and also to the fellow panel members who will be sharing their unique insights today. By way of introduction, my name is Alex Weber. I'm the acting director of the Future Connectivity Team, which sits within the Australian Government Department of Home Affairs. My team delivers a suite of programs and policy settings which aim to collectively uplift the security of Australia's telecommunications technologies by working to ensure Australia has access to a diverse market of telecommunication vendors and providers. What I will say up front is that the Australian government is very supportive of emerging technologies with the potential to contribute to an open, interoperable, secure and transparent telecommunications market such as Open RAN. Open RAN shows promise in delivering more affordable mobile telecommunication solutions when compared to single vendor solutions, supporting stronger technology supply chain security and resilience. By their very nature, open RAN systems require collaboration and the ability to test the integration of various uh, varying systems and technologies, which cannot be achieved in isolation. So to address this need, the Australian government recognizes the crucial role uh, testing facilities, including OTICs, um, uh, play in ensuring that there's an open, collaborative and vendor neutral working environment for vendors to progress developments of open RAN technologies. The, the Australian government is actively engaged in efforts to, to support the development and widespread deployment of open RAN and the diversification of Australia's national telecommunications supply chain. We've endorsed a, a number of uh, statements, including the Prague proposals on telecommunications supplier diversity and the Quad Memorandum of Cooperation on 5G supplier diversification and open RAN, to name a few. We are also progressing a number of domestic initiatives um, and, and one being the establishment of the Secure G Connectivity Test Lab. The Secure G Connectivity Test Lab in particular, once established, will provide a prime opportunity for Australia to collaborate with other like-minded labs, including OTICS, to promote telecommunications, innovation, security and harmony among testing environments. Thank you. Thank you so much. And last but not least, we have Mr. Quek. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Joshua. Um, can I project the slides? Uh, okay. So I'm, I'll just keep my presentation short. Um, so I, I'm Tony. So uh, I, I work as a, at a university. At the same time, I'm heading the B5G uh, national program in Singapore, which is a uh, phase one until 2025. Uh, planning for phase two. At the same time, I'm also heading the OTIC. Uh, as part of the Future Comms Initiative, which we view that that is one of the key direction that Singapore wants to drive. So I'll just keep our focus on OTIC. Uh, our OTIC was uh, announced in uh, February at uh, MWC. Uh, we have three focus, essentially uh, focusing on security, uh, building security capabilities, testing on multi-vendor ORAN solution, uh, energy efficiency, sustainability, uh, the goal is essentially the use of the OTIC is to build an ecosystem around Singapore. Uh, the vendors uh, could actually branch out to ASEAN as a market. And uh, applications, uh, verticals, uh, which are essential for Singapore, for example, like marine time, uh, aviation, and, and so on. Uh, this is my last slide. So the capability uh, we are planning for expansion is uh, enhanced security testing, uh, fuzzy attack root cause analysis tools, which is uh, non uh, uh, additional testing, end-to-end -end sustainability testing capability. Uh, we have just set up our rig tester, abil uh, ability to do rig SAP, RAPS testing capability across the different interfaces. We hope to showcase more next year. 
But what is actually more interesting is that we're actually expanding our OTIC to include NTN testing capability by next year. Uh, we foresee that in the future there will be opportunities for uh, ORM vendors to branch into NTN uh, ecosystem. So we are actually preparing this uh, in our pipeline. And that's all. Thank you. Thank you. So we will now move into the Q&A portion. And I would welcome any of the speakers to volunteer to provide answers to these questions. So the first one is, is there a role for OTIX and other research and development labs, both public and private, to play in promoting the responsible use of AI and emerging technologies, avoiding internet fragmentation, cybersecurity, cybercrime and online safety, data governance and trust, digital divides and inclusion, global digital governance and cooperation, human rights and freedoms, and sustainability and the environment. So that's a long list of options, but the key question here is, what is the benefit here of the OTEX and how as far as their reach? Any volunteers? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, of course, uh, it's a very traditional uh, issue, a very important question for IGF. I was part of a past IGF session in uh, maybe Germany, but now uh, I'm in a position of uh, OTIC. So um, to introduce, um, ORAN uh, is an initi initiative that has only been around uh, four to five years, and the current scope of uh, certification and badging is OTIC, uh, as I explained, conformance, interoperability, and end-to-end. Therefore, certification and badging currently performed by OTIC is limited to uh, confirming compliance with technical specifications, interoperability, and meeting minimum requirements uh, for function and security uh, for end-to-end. -end. Meanwhile, uh, like other speakers uh, already explained, uh, discussions are underway to make a security badge as the fourth certification or badge for OTIC. Uh, this is a dedicated there is a dec dedicated technical group, working group 11, to discuss security issue. I believe that the role of OTIC to be played in promoting responsible use of AI and emerging technology will be depend on the future uh, developments. As for uh, digital divide, of course, it is believed that uh, reducing the cost of uh, procuring, uh, procuring a communications infrastructure equipment and regarding uh, sustainability and environment, uh, like other speakers in the previous session and this session discussed already, uh, energy saving is the key uh, topic uh, of uh, communication equipment uh, energy saving and will eventually contribute to this discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Would anyone else like to chime in? Uh, well, uh, as, I, as I mentioned before, uh, our OTIC has a specific characteristic in Washington, D.C. because we came from the, we are academia as well, at the same time that we provide service for uh, vendors, multi-vendors to test their uh, disaggregate uh, uh, radio, base, uh, radio access networking. Uh, in our case, uh, what we have been trying to do, what I have been trying to do there, um, despite being the uh, XG testbed director in Washington, D.C., I am also a research faculty at EC department at Virginia Tech. And this is play a, a very important role in when we have a, a boutique infrastructure, because I, I like to say that we have not just an infrastructure that is binded to provide service for the OTIC but we have a transformative infrastructure where we use this transformative infrastructure to create the workforce development and wireless communication networking. And uh, just to give you an example, six months ago, we brought to this laboratory in Washington, D.C., uh, a group of uh, college students that they have never before touch and the understanding of the end-to-end -end of cellular telecommunication network. And we, did, we make available for them our radio ceiling radio infrastructure where these college students, we walk them through how to deploy their own cellular telecommunication network, how to deploy their base station, how to deploy the core networking, how to connect COTS UE, how to connect uh, programmable, software-defined radio UEs. And this is what I call 
we are using this as a transformative infrastructure, not just for OT, but to, bre to break the digital divide, but in the same time to do the inclusion of what those students that are college students or universities that does not have access to this kind of advanced infrastructure that they can really, okay, bind and training the students with hands-on experience. I think this is what uh, we have been doing and OTIC so far. But in the same time, the OTIC in Washington DC as well, we have what I, I call an end-to-end open source platform, right? We are aware that uh, the industry partner today, they have been developed, they are disaggregated, CU, DU, REU, but our proprietor, okay, uh, we, uh, we can bring this equipment, this piece of uran components to our laboratory, but this is not open, they are not open. They will not allow the students to train, to do really innovations, develop a new mechanism, a new algorithm in training and test these mechanisms in this closed box CU, DU, and RU. What we have done is we create in Washington DC OTIC an end-to-end O-RAN, okay, open source platform that allow us to develop a new AI ML mechanisms and deploy and test and sign off a base stations in the physical layer and the application layer of the, of the, of the, the, the base stations. And these allow innovation, okay, and allow as well create the, for the workforce development. At the same time that we can easily portable this new mechanism that has been training the, and validating an open source platform to the commercial equipment. Because the open source platform is also end-to-end -end run compliant. If the industrial vendor come to us and bring the SEU, the URU, and tell us that it's complying, with the URAN specifications, this means that what we have developed and tested in our URAN framework, open source URAN framework, should work as well in the, in the commercial CU, DU, and RU. Thank you. It's fascinating to hear how multidimensional and multi-stakeholder this work is, um, truly in line with our efforts here at the Internet Governance Forum on supporting an equitable and inclusive approach to the Internet. So very interesting. Um, if it's all right, I'll move to the next question and turn to you and Mr. Weber first. So what are the benefits to the vendors or users in terms of cost and the speed of examination due to the competition among OTICs around the world? Would you like to go first? Thank okay, you. so I'll, I, I would think um, it's not about competition. So uh, what, what actually is more important is the normalization. So as we foresee, there'll be more OTICs. So how do you actually ensure the standard is maintained. How do you mutually recognize each other testing or badging? I think that's important. Uh, that's where uh, different OTICs can come together to help to bring the ecosystem uh, in order to ensure that um, ORAN is the solution for subsequently beyond 5G and 6G. Another important factor, how do we even to share our testing report, the mechanism? I think these are the things that uh, would actually reduce cost, ensure sustainability. That's where the opportunities are. So I foresee more of a collaboration, which is uh, what we have done uh, uh, organizing a global OTIC summit in August. We hope that this will continue so that OTICs can work together. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very interesting. Um, Mr. Weber, would you like to address that question and perhaps tell us a little bit more about Australia's plans um, with regard to OTICs in the future? Um, is there an Australian lab that has engaged with the broader research and development ecosystem? Thank you. Thank you. So uh, uh, to, to answer the first question, I'll, I'll um, you know, leave it to my OT colleagues on the panel for, for, I guess, further explanation. But I guess from a higher level, at a higher level, I think cooperation between labs will reduce the development timeframes. And um, I think labs could coordinate testing such that each lab recognizes Testing from another that adds new testing opportunities to promote development in, and innovation. And this may also include testing against additional vendors or sharing testing methodologies, methodologies globally to promote telecommunications integration and consistency. 
In terms of uh, the Australian government and uh, our own testing facilities and what options there may be in terms of cooperation with OTICs in the future. So as I mentioned in my earlier remarks, the Australian government is working to establish its own testing facility known as the SecureG Connectivity Test Lab. The key objectives of the lab is to provide an environment for industry, including telecommunications vendors to test their equipment, standards, software and protocols that underpin emerging interoperable networks with a primary focus on security and interoperability. The lab will be a government-led facility with work currently underway to select a prime contractor to design, establish and operate the lab over an initial period. So at this stage where we estimate that the lab will be fully operational by mid 2024, so next year. In post-establishment, Australia is very much open to increasing engagement across the broader testing ecosystem, including with OTICs. We, we currently engage with um, a number of uh, government partners from, you know, through with US and the UK in particular, and, and a number of, um, I guess, testing facilities within those countries. Um, but there, are, there is an opportunity to engage with these, um, the, these other uh, testing facilities, including OTIC. Uh, what I will note as well is that um, Australia is also engaging with um, uh, a number of other, I guess, research institutions in support of our own uh, telecommunications security and diversification objectives. And one particular initiative that we are uh, currently um, undertaking is um, some work with Australia's Commonwealth Scientific and Industrial Research Organisation um, to undertake research and development into next generation telecommunications security requirements. And this particular research will develop um, security protocols towards interoperable virtualized telecommunications technologies and establish a sovereign evidence base for industry efforts to build upon. So I guess uh, to sum up there, Jaisha, I think it's, you know, the uh, the information sharing and the opportunity that is presented to all of us uh, across the testing um, ecosystem is is something that we should all um, embrace and and really you know seek to to leverage the opportunity that that is presented in this current form. Thank you. I completely agree. Thank you for those remarks. Um, you talked a lot about the opportunities for collaboration here. And I'd like to hear from the other panelists about what kinds of additional cooperation is feasible between each OTIC and perhaps even other research and development labs. Any volunteers? Uh, thank you very much for very important questions. Um, well, uh, first of all, um, the current uh, challenge uh, for OTIC is to efficiently conduct a test required by ORAN specification and issue certification uh, in an expected time frame. It is also important to increase the motivation uh, of each vendor to obtain OTIC certification and encourage them to obtain OTIC certificate. Uh, therefore, it is possible for OTIC to share the best practices uh, regarding uh, first, efficient testing and certification methods, and second, effective public relation of open run OTIC certification and raising motivation for obtaining certification badging of OTIC. And we have uh, started this uh, practice um, in this uh, ORAN Alliance. Uh, we have a regular face-to-face uh, -face, face meeting. Uh, last meeting was in uh, Osaka, uh, hosted by, Japan, by Japanese telecom operator. And we have very fruitful uh, exchange of uh, experience and knowledge. And uh, we have another meeting uh, regularly, uh, three times a year. And also we would like to uh, thank the um, hosting a, a Global OTIC Summit in Singapore. Um, uh, one of our operator uh, participated uh, this uh, summit exercise and uh, discussion and the information exchange was very useful. So um, we will continue this uh, uh, information and experience uh, exchange. Thank you. Thank you. Would you like to address collaboration briefly? Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Uh, I see the collaboration two folds. First, the OTIC, they can, uh, they can share facility resources, okay, because some of the, the OTICs, they don't have what you call uh, in the field test, okay? We should not do the testing only in lab. We should test outdoor in the field as well with different frequency, with different distance range, right? And the second uh, uh, part is that 
the OTIC, we as OTIC, we need to collaborate in such a way that you can have a minimal viable testing package that is common across of all the OTIC, OTIC to make sure that the result that is getting for testing a CU and OTIC A is the same values that we get in OTIC B. What are the advantages when you have this? Because we, you all, we can create together, okay, automation, automated testing environment. What are the gain in the benefits to have an end-to-end -end automated testing? Basically, we will be able to control the cost to, to test, but in the same time, we are also we will be able to speed up, okay, the time to the market from this CU and this RU. And last but not least, thank you. Yeah, I'll just Mr. keep it short. So uh, we are trying to um, uh, use remote remote access. So the first uh, we have connected to the University of Surrey. There's a B5G center. So they are looking at massive MIMO RU. So the, the issues uh, we are looking at some of these uh, testing across uh, remotely and uh, accessing us. The second is uh, to work with the Philippines. I think there's some discussion on this Open RAN Academy in Philippines. Try, uh, trying to let them use our rig tester equipment, developing package, packages to help them. And the third is a uh, uh, partner with uh, OTIC. So we are starting with uh, Northeastern University OTIC in discussion whether we could share some resources and uh, advance some of the research capability and the minimum viable. How do you actually de define the minimum viable profile for different vertical services? Thank you. Thank you very much. That concludes this panel. Let's give them a round of applause and we'll move into the final portion of the event. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the moderators and panelists. Uh, finally, uh, could we have a closing remarks from uh, the moderators and DG Mr. Tawara? So first, Hishida-san, then to Jaisha and Tawara-san, please. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for uh, uh, staying in this room until the end. <laughs> uh, well, uh, it's my great pleasure to be uh, the pan moderator of the, of the first pa pan panel. Uh, in my panel, uh, actually, it was very encouraging to see that, that, that from the all panelists, we hear the very positive comment from the future of the, uh, the uh, open run, including the European uh, vendors and the European carriers. And uh, I, I think it, it, this is very uh, worth, worth, worthy because uh, we have a very balanced panelist. We have panelists from the Jap Asia, from the US, and also Japan, and uh, Europe. And we have uh, uh, panelists from the telecom carriers and vendors, and uh, also the, 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 the Philippine operators who is now considering the introduction, introducing of the open run. So uh, actually, I'd like to thank all the panelists for participating in this uh, panel, and also I'd like to thank all the audiences here for listening to this uh, panel carefully. Uh, I, uh, th 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 thank you for having me as a moderator here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, so I would just say in conclusion, we heard a lot about the opportunities that open radio access networks present. And those include opportunities to address security considerations, opportunities for performance, and energy efficiency, and lowering cost. And so I found it very interesting to hear about the efforts around the world to develop these OTICs, which are so critical to addressing and solving the challenges and presenting opportunities. And so, for example, expanding market entry reducing time to market, and reducing cost. But it can't be done alone. We need to collaborate between the OTICs, with the labs, industry collaboration is key, and governments have a role to support as well. And finally, 
I was very impressed by the synergies between this workshop and the Internet Governance Forum. Um, so we are discussing Open RAN, but it also relates to these broader issues. So we heard about AI and workforce and bridging the digital divide and supporting an equitable and inclusive approach to telecom ecosystems. And it's also part of the multi-stakeholder approach involving academic institutions, for example. And so it, it, it all comes together, and I'm very grateful again to the Japanese for organizing this important event, and to all of you for participating. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, to wonderful moderators. Yeah, so Mr. Hishida and uh, Ms. Jaisha, thank you very much again. And uh, anyway, uh, open network is a very, very uh, important issue. So uh, op open and secure network, we, uh, we will uh, construct and uh, we will uh, rewrite the such network is uh, very important uh, uh, for future internet, for future network. So uh, anyway, uh, we will uh, strongly promote uh, open run policy issues uh, continuously with our colleagues, or with our uh, like-minded countries. So anyway, uh, thank you very much today. Thank you. <laughs>